It's all about you with WYOU Interactive. Welcome back. We're continuing our conversation on teachers' labor issues within the Scranton Diocese. You can join us by giving us a phone call like Charlie from Scranton. Charlie, thanks for calling in tonight. Good. How are you, gentlemen? Good. What's your question or uh, comment, Charlie? Yeah, I just have a comment to make. I uh, support the gentleman on your panel there. I'm a proud member of uh, Teamsters, a local union, for 30 years. And uh, the only thing I could sum it up in a nutshell is, is I believe that this uh, bishop is being a little bit of a tyrant. And I believe the whole problem why they don't want to honor the school teachers' contracts is because of all the massive lawsuits that they've paid out over the, the years with uh, the abuse. All right, Charlie, our next caller, Ruth from Wilkesbury. Ruth, thanks for calling in. Oh, you're very welcome. We'd like to understand that when the federal government has a law, it is a specific law that governs all of the states in America, all right? It's the same as if you're driving in any state in America and you come to a stop sign, you must stop because it's a federal law through the Department of Transportation. Therefore, if we are discussing the diocese is in violation of the law, they're wrong. They are breaking the law. They can be a Catholic organization or whatever. They are still breaking the law. It's a federal law. You cannot do that. And what federal law do you feel that they're breaking? Go ahead. Well, Go ahead. Bruce. Okay. Uh, well, the fact is they're not breaking a federal law. We're one of the few groups that don't fall under federal law. We had a Supreme Court case uh, rule as such in, in 1979. Us and the Army were one of the few groups that are not entitled to uh, protection under the labor laws. Uh, ironically, uh, it was based on the fact that in 1935, when they wrote the, the act, uh, they didn't specifically include us. In 1935, there were probably, you could, well, you could probably fit every lay teacher in, in America in a, in a phone booth. So, so simply so because we didn't there. exist at that point, we weren't enumerated in the law. Right. So it's a loophole. And I'd like to respond to something that somebody else said. It, it's no wonder to us that there's an empty chair here when you invited someone from the diocese to argue their case, because if he came, he'd have to square a circle. Uh, it's simply, it's an egregious breach of Catholic teaching that for a hundred years has guaranteed us this right. Rights which you, which we may add, were guaranteed us again a year and a half ago when we first began this process. When our old employers went out of business, uh, we immediately petitioned to be recognized by our new employers and they cautioned us to have patience. They would recognize, rec recognize us, they would give us the right for recognition through a secret battle election just as soon as a new regional school board were put into place. And we have been patient for a year and a half, waiting for that. All the while, diocesan officials looked us in the eye and told us we had this right. We had it for 30 years. Church teaching has said it was appropriate for 100 years. And all of a sudden, we get blindsided with an article in the paper saying, you don't have this right anymore. Uh, the Father knows best. They're paternalistic. They're telling us they know what's best for us. And all we want to do is to be full partners with this because we believe in Catholic education. This is my year number 36 in, in the business. I'm in it because I believe in it. But apparently, the diocese doesn't believe in me. And, of course, the diocese argument is the majority of the schools that they dealt with were not part of this union. How, what are the numbers uh, before the we, we post-consolidation? What are the numbers nine, of unionized have, teachers that are, that are still in the system? Nine of the ten high schools that were yes. organized. Right. We're, we're and, and, and as we reorganized for the uh, new structure, we had well over 80% of the teachers uh, sign authorization cards willing to vote for the union. So people who were previous union members and people who weren't, 80% of the teachers in this diocese indicated to us with signed authorization cards that we can present to a neutral third party that they want a union. So what did that tell you? Well, no breaking of federal laws. That There's really no neutral third party to go to in this type well, we of dispute. We, we would have agreed to mutually. You, you would have to Choose mutually one. agree, yeah, but they're sure. saying that they're moving on. Uh, what are your options at this point? What's going to be happening in the future? Uh, well, we are having a rally tomorrow to which we've invited uh, anybody who's concerned about the issue, but certainly parents, students, all of our members, organized labor in the area. Uh, we expect hundreds of people to turn up uh, in front of the cathedral, in front of the bishop's residence. Uh, we'll 5.30. Have, at 5.30 tomorrow, tomorrow evening. Uh, we, we, pr we plan to uh, pray for the bishop first. Uh, and, and then, you know, there'll be a number of speakers that present our issues to the public. And demonstrate the solidarity with us. And hopefully, as your first caller said, if we can get other people from other unions to join in with us on our cause, perhaps we can bring to bear some pressure that will make... Let's take a break. Before we go to break, though, let's check in with Candace and see what's coming up ahead.